welcome. Today I've been uh, waiting to have a conversation with Pat Connor. And before we get going on this and what he does, we'll just do our uh, acknowledgement. And we acknowledge we're land on the land of the Durambal people. And we acknowledge the custodians of the lands past, present and emerging. And we, uh, in the spirit of reconciliation, we thank them for letting us have this conversation. Uh, I'll do a Kiwi opening there. Me no tatu, whakataka teho ki te uru, whakataka teho ki te tunga, ki a mākina ki na ki uta, ki a mātara tāra ki tai. E hi aka ana te takura, he tio, he huka, he ho hu, ti he Māori ora. And that, that last kind of welcome and um, getting us ready for the meeting talks about the winds and the landscape and uh, that we we're going to be present. So it, it kind of talks about what we're going to be talking about. And when I first arrived in Rockhampton, I was waiting outside of somebody's office and there was this fantastic picture of uh, a mine. I'm not sure if it was a coal mine. Maybe it was a coal mine in oil, about uh, a metre and a half by a metre and a half um, on a wall. Uh, and in the middle of these kind of coal faces, and it was an open, it wasn't a deep mine, was a, a blue vacuum cleaner. And, and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what that's about. And then I looked at the side, there was a little label, uh, label Pat Connor, and it, and it belongs to our university. And I remember asking somebody in the office, I said, them, do these paintings ever get moved around the university? And then, and I said, I'd love that one. And lo and behold, a week later, it was being moved around and I had it. So I'm um, privileged to be able to speak to you, Pat, and um, we'll be talking about art and things. And so, so could you just tell me, so who are you? Hmm. That's a very existential question. Um, Share what you want. I grew up in central Queensland. In fact, I was born um, not far from here in our um, public uh, health system and grew up on the other side of the river and spent most of my early childhood and um, I guess young adolescent life knocking about these regions um, mm. and ultimately went off to college as a lot of people a lot of people do. Yeah. Mm. So what took you into the world of art? Have you always been we a little kid? painting on whatever you could get. What, what, what has taken you into this world? That's a really good question, mm. Stephen. Uh, yes, I was always very interested in the visual arts. I think um, people who find themselves drawing and uh, continue to draw mm. often gravitate towards visually creative disciplines. Mm. And I guess um, I could identify with, you know, being one of those kinds of characters. Um, probably also a little bit more introverted than extroverted. I was never going to be on the stage. I'd be the world's worst comedian, I can guarantee that. <laughs> um, but probably was quite comfortable um, mm. observing things. Uh, mm. I get a great deal of pleasure out of looking at things around me mm. and uh, maybe picking up a, a pencil as a young kid was a part of that. Mm. Um, and probably showed a little bit of proficiency, um, sufficient I think um, interest and proficiency for my mother to um, to see if I wanted to you know, do a little bit of training. Mm. And I remember going to um, a place on a Saturday morning underneath someone's uh, a lady's house. It's called the uh, Vanatelli School of Art, and um, I guess I picked up a paintbrush there, and in particular, mm. you know, started with gouache and oils, and um, tried to understand a reasonable method for being able to picture the things that I did see around me. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, um, I should have told the people that who are watching now, of course, you are an accomplished painter, uh, accomplished printmaker, and um, you didn't just fall into it. So from, from here as the little kid on a Saturday morning, to now becoming both uh, an accomplished in the skill of that and teaching we'll come back to, what was the journey? Mm. Well, thank you for um, thank you for those kind words. From mm. my point of view, um, sometimes you don't really celebrate all that well their achievements. All you see is the shortcomings. Mm. Um, just uh, recently, one of my students f finished off one of her oral assessments with the comment that there's always so much more to learn, and um, that's indeed the case. After I finished up 
uh, with schooling here in central Queensland, I went to Toowoomba to do an undergraduate visual arts degree. Mm. And that's where I really got my formative training. And um, I certainly don't regret ever making that decision to do that. It's, mm. um, it's been a really wild and exciting mm. journey ever since. And to now find myself uh, teaching in a BA, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Mm. Um, obviously, I enjoy the craft. I also very much enjoy being a student. Mm. And um, I enjoy being a teacher. So um, I think, you know, with, with those interests, uh, I, I feel like I'm very lucky to find myself in this situation. I can't imagine doing anything else. In fact, I mm. really love what I do. Mm. Mm. And, uh, of course, the thing with art is it's it, um, one of the intriguing things. It's about multiple skills. Do you feel that uh, when you started out, and I referred to this lovely big oil painting, um, you probably had other ideas when you were working and trying things. Were, were, did you fall into doing oils? Or, or, and you and I have had a conversation about, we were talking about watercolours. And for me, watercolours, mm. is, as you shared mm. in that conversation, was, you know, you, you kind of, you make your decision, bang, you're gone. Mm. You either get it right or wrong. There's no mm. way back. And mm. were you exploring these kind of things in your kind of formative Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, you do, I guess. Um, with respects to the first part of your question as it related to that painting, mm. um, I did have some other things in mind. And uh, it was a part of a body of work that was exhibited uh, locally here at our regional art gallery. And, um, you know, th that was a, a great opportunity for me. And just prior to that, I had been offered an alternate um, sort of vocational pathway. There was a job uh, working at one of our local central Queensland mines. There were some aspects of the job that were attractive, particularly the remuneration was um, <laughs> significantly <laughs> higher than my pay packet as a government employee. Mm. Um, but there were other aspects of that, particularly the politics around um, being employed by um, a company that digs big, ho big holes in the ground to extract coal mm. was something of concern to me. And I, um, so that quandary um, really provided an opportunity to ponder a range of different things. And in particular, thinking about not just um, our local economy and how much it's supported by our local industries, including mm. um, the coal fields just uh, northwest of here. Um, naturally our state economy and also our um, mm. you know, federal GDP seems so heavily dependent on um, the sale of commodities mm. overseas. Uh, so that um, really kind of microcosm, if you like, that personal experience where um, the ethical considerations were playing around in my head and left a kind of quandary for me, I thought when played out larger in a, more, you know, in a broader social setting, um, wasn't dissimilar. And that provided an avenue for a way of thinking about maybe an exhibition and um, thinking about mm. the, I hadn't really painted landscape paintings in such a long time. And there was um, an opportunity to return, I guess, to the landscape um, using it. Um, and the, so a tradition of Australian landscape painting is a backdrop for that conversation. Mm. 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 It's very, it's very interesting, very interesting. And, uh, and I think I just to let the viewers know as well and uh, and I recently discovered that you're actually now embarking on a, a, a master of arts. And in, in, in the world of like creative and performance arts, uh, people don't really do doctorates. You know, it, that isn't really the kind of thing they do. They, they do the master of, sometimes in America, they call it a master of fine arts, I believe, mm -hmm. isn't it? And uh, I see again, you're quite interested in that um, societal statement and you grappling with what is uh, planetary art. Mm. Um, if I was to draw back a little bit mm. from um, the specifics of that question, mm. Stephen, I think for contemporary artists, um, particularly uh, as a result of some pivotal shifts in European and American visual arts practices in the latter part of the 20th century. I'm, I'm particularly thinking around 1968 um, through to the early 70s. Things really shifted a lot. And um, I believe that uh, many people in 
the art world, shall we call it establishments, um, that was mostly European driven, really were kind of reflecting on um, the value of art. Mm. And uh, at that time, there were a range of ways of thinking about it. And some Marxist discourses seemed to be useful as a way of reflecting on how mm. um, gallery systems worked and how that maybe had impacts mm. on the way we understand what mm. those objects are. And uh, I think as a result of that, contemporary visual artists are actually probably more keen than ever to try to make work that is um, reasonably accessible, but more importantly, um, is relevant to people on the street and mm. has some kind of relationship to our contemporary world and our society. Mm. Uh, and um, I, I guess maybe that's uh, more recently reflecting on those things and my own practice, mm. um, trying to develop a kind of cogency and relevance with the work by thinking in those terms. Mm. Oh, that will be something worth following. Mm. Thank you for our first conversation. Thank yeah, you. you're very welcome. Thank you.